Welcome back to another construct video and in this video we're looking at how we can start creating 3D levels and build 3D worlds just like this one. This is just a quick example I've put together and by no means shows off what you can do with the tool um, but we'll give you a bit of an insight. I'm not a designer by any means but this was something I was able to knock up quite quickly using 3D objects and everything has collision on it which is the most important thing. I'm not having to do any extra code today, it's all about the design side. So before you get started, make sure you've watched part one on how we create a first person controller and move around. And let's get started with the video. So in part one, we did everything with just a default cube. And all our code is linked to this default cube as well. I've got some extra code from the jumping and gravity video. So if you're wondering why there's a bit extra there, it's just because of that. But everything's based around this cube. And the last thing we want to do is have to copy and paste this code every time we've got a new 3D object. So how do we get around this? We still use the 3D cube for everything, but we instead change what faces are going to be shown on there. You'll see that this is option at the bottom to change its back face, front face, left face, right face, top face, and bottom face. So we're going to insert a new object, scroll down. I recommend a tile background for this, but you can use a sprite. And there's some reasons you might want to use a sprite over tile background. I'm going to call this stone or stone 2 because I've already got one for stone. I'm just going to import in a texture. So I've just copied and pasted one and I've got one here and just hit the X. Now with this stone texture in place, I can click on my cube and I can change its face. So the front face is the top one. So I'm going to grab stone 2 and you'll see that's now applied to my cube. Now if we want to make this image smaller, we can't just make it smaller here. For tile backgrounds, you have to edit it and just resize it. So keep aspect ratio on. Let's do this a quarter of the size, as much smaller. And you'll see we get that bigger stone texture onto our shape. And this is what I've just done here for this example. So I've got my different textures here. I've got my grass, I've got a dirt tile, I've got stone, wood, and I'll get to water a little bit later because that's something a little bit different. So I click on my grass floor you'll see that I've got the back face is dirt, front face is grass, again, front face being the top one. Then the others are set to dirt as well. Bottom, I've not put one on, so I'm just going to put a dirt one on there. Really, really quick and easy. So you can do this for all of your different 3D objects. And again, it's just taking the same block that we've got and then just changing its faces. And this means that the collision works for all of them. Now, if you want to select multiple objects, let's say these stone walls, I want to have something different. I'm just going to hold control and click on them. That means I can select more than one. This is really, really nice if you want to change multiple textures all at the same time. And I'm going to say the very top of my stone walls is actually going to have wood now. So just the top is now being converted to wood. So this is a really, really nice way to do it because, again, there's no extra code needed. So how do we start doing stuff like these different roofs? Well, with the 3D block, if I take it, let's resize this one to a standard size. So let's do 120 by 120. So I've got my block there, and let's do 120 in the Z for the Z height. So this is how tall the object is. You can actually change what shape you've got. So there is a prism. So this is almost like a roof point, which is what I've got on here, but it's just a bit smaller, a bit flatter. You've got a wedge, so you can kind of see that there. A pyramid, which is what I've got for these top textures here. And then corner in and corner out, which a little bit more niche and a bit harder to use. So that's one way that we can change the object. There's a bit of wedge on. You can also change the height of the object, how tall the object is. So I can make this wedge 500. It's a very, very tall wedge and very, very pointy. We can also change the Z elevation. Now by default, all objects will start at a zero elevation. And if you want this to be on top, let's say that I want this particular corner here to have this wedge on. Easiest thing to do is click on this object. This has a Z height of 120 and it starts at zero. So we're gonna add these numbers together, which would be 120. And that's where I want to start this object Z elevation from. So 120, and that means that it will fit perfectly on top of this shape here. And if I was to play it again, I will see that. And there we go. There's our massive wedge sitting on top of the block. 
So that's how we approach these 3D objects to make sure that we don't have to do any more work in the code, especially as it can be quite a lot of code to get even just this to work. So what else can we do with this? Well, one of the options is we can actually turn off certain faces. So I can turn off the front face, and this gives me almost like a little box. So if I put one of these in my world, let's turn off a different face instead. And let's put the Z elevation back up to zero. And if we look at this now, you'll see that there is a side missing. Now there are some glitchy textures because we've got textures overlapping. So I just need to make sure this box is slightly higher than it is so it's not overlapping my grass. But one thing we should be aware of now is no matter if we use the wedge, if we use the hole in the box, everything still has the same square collision. So I can't actually go inside of this, the collision is still the same. And for these pyramids and wedges, it is still a square collision. So if I just grab one to quickly test that, this is still a square box. I still cannot go and walk on the side of this. So I'm trying to jump on it and I can't, if it was a bit more shallow, I could jump actually on top of it, but I'm jumping on top of it as a square object. So a couple of little challenges there. So what else can we do? Well, we can actually add in animations to our 3D objects as well, which is what we're doing with this waterfall. So this waterfall here is actually its own separate object. So if I just try and click on it, it's got a really, really weird sort of hitbox. So it's that one there at the bottom. So let's just grab that again. This is actually its own object called waterfall. So the Z height is set to 4,000 and the elevation is minus 500. So it sinks into the ground a little bit. And the way this works is if we actually look at the waterfall block itself, you'll see it is just a regular block. Same three objects we've been dealing with so far. The only reason why it's in its own separate block as opposed to the one we've got here is because I don't want it to have the solid behavior. It's the only thing that's different about it. What I've also got is I've got a sprite. So this is just a sprite that has got an animation attached to it. And for this animation, I've literally just found a GIF online and used a GIF to PNG converter. And this is just a simple sort of water effect. Once I've got that and I've set it to loop, I can just apply that onto my waterfall. So I try and grab this waterfall again, a little bit tricky you'll see that I've just put all the faces set to water animated by just clicking on it like so, and it will play that animation. So if I was to run this again, you can see this a little bit now, and we get that animation playing. Now I've stretched this image quite a lot, but actually it still gives quite a nice effect. And because it hasn't got the solid collision, I'm able to walk through this onto the other side. Now I am able to step in between this, so I'd have to make this object a little bit thinner, you can see we've got some glitchy textures as well because we have got a little bit of overlap. That's another challenge that you do have to cope with when working inside of Construct in 3D. Just a quick edit to note, one of the things I've not mentioned as well is to do rotation. You can rotate 3D objects by using the options on the block or by using the angles at the side there. One of the drawbacks of Construct at the moment which is missing is you can only currently rotate on the X plane. You cannot rotate on the Y or the Z plane. This means that yes, we can rotate this block and we can turn it so it's facing another way, but we cannot rotate it to make a slope or a slant in any particular way. So this is another big limitation, unfortunately, with Contra 3D and it's a feature I'm hoping they're going to add to. One of the other things I'll mention is I'll put a link to this world in the description if you want to try it for yourself. Right, back to the video. So what about this house? So this house is just taking all the skills that we've looked at so far and just put them together. So the roof is just uh, a prism. And then these walls are just set to different heights. So this first one is set to 30. This top one is set to 90 to give me a window in between. And I've just put a slightly thicker pillar inside of here and I've used a wood texture floor. So I'm just taking the 3D object, making it as thin as possible and having that as my floor. So a lot of it's just the skills that we've looked at already, just combine them together. So finally, that leaves the sky. So unfortunately, there's no way at the moment to do a proper sky box inside of Construct. Not that I found anyway, but we can change the color of the sky. So to do this, we click on layer at the bottom, so layer zero, and we can just change the background color. So currently it's set to blue. If I want to make it more of a nighttime sort of level, let's change it to be a sort of darker blue, sort of purple look. 
And again, it's just changed on that layer there. I can run this again. And now we've got this sort of dark sort of blue, which doesn't really fit the vibe of my level whatsoever. Um, looks a little bit strange. For the clouds, the clouds are actually just a thing that I've added over the top. So I've got this 3D shape that I've created. And this one I have textured inside of the 3D animation pane because I only want it to be this and this only. I'm not changing the animations. I'm not adding other objects to it or change it in any way. This is the only thing it's gonna look like. So I've got that. I've created its own separate object because it doesn't need collision. Again, anything that needs collision, you're taking your block and you're editing your block. Because again, it just means that you don't need to redo any code. And then for this, I've made it a Z height of 20, the Z elevation set to 400. And I'm just running these two lines or this line of code at the bottom. So this will repeat 30 times and we'll randomly put the clouds onto the level using a random layout width and a random layout height. I also set the Z elevation to be random as well. So that's about it on the stuff that we can do with Construct 3D and playing around with these options and putting them together, we can do some really, really great stuff. So this is just an example of what I've made in about half an hour of messing around. But I want to show you what somebody with a bit more talent can make. So this is a fantastic example that is on the Construct uh, examples page at the moment. And I'll put a link to that in the description. And this is just a really, really great example of what you can do with these 3D objects. So these crates are just one 3D block that has just been positioned and rotated in a certain way. We've got actual real textures that have been made on the house and then put on that 3D block. You can see that they've took time to actually make these little pillars that go into the ground. And again, these are just taking that wood texture, putting it on, then putting a stone texture at the bottom. We've got another stone platform. So it's just combining all these layers together. These railings, if you're curious, they're all individual items to put these railings in. It is a lot of work, but it does pay off. And then this tree, again, just one block at the top, one for the tree, and then a couple for the bottom. So this gives you a really idea, a good idea of what you could make inside a Construct 3D with some more time and adding those proper sprites and textures. But that's gonna be it for me today. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more 3D Construct videos.